we're going to take our layer two further and then we will be discussing about uh, one of the most fascinating protocol which is called as stp stands for spanning tree protocol <coughs> so you might have been through some more some basic understandings about spanning tree protocol but then in this session we will be kind of talking about uh, a brief understanding of how stp actually works so you can say that uh spanning tree protocol by default of course works on all the layer three devices and even the layer three devices as well like the layer three switches that we talked about and it kind of enables the network to configure itself in order to become loop free right so for example if you have uh, topology where there can there is like possibility of a loop a loop being being created like this scenario or you have four routers that are connected together in a mesh fashion or something like that then stp needs to play its role in order to like save the network from being kind of a, a loop network from a like loop network to a loop free network so though your physical topology will definitely be looking like this but your logical instance according to stp would look something like if you even have if you enjoyed the content of the video don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel your logical instance would look like this if this becomes your root page or something like that right so one of the so stp kind of according to the standard definition stp kind of blocks the uh, one or more you can say it out so that there cannot be any loop in your network now there are types as well various other types that that, that are available and you must be familiar with how bpdu works right or how uh, what's the root port and what's the root bridge and various other port states of those those things and all so we will be talking about that as well but <clears throat> So it kind of enables switches to become aware about other switches through exchanging BPUs and all, right? And STP kind of builds a layer to loop free topology in an environment uh, by temporarily blocking the ports or blocking traffic on redundant ports, you can say. So STP operates by selecting a specific switch as uh, as the master switch, to which we call as a root bridge, okay? And then uh, all the other devices kind of tries to find the shortest path in order to reach out to that master bridge. And then by taking certain scenarios in consideration, it kind of finds what's the best, uh, like what, what's the worst route that it has, or worst you can say network segment that it has, and it blocks that particular length there so that the loops cannot really be formed into a network. Now there is also I would say the algorithm which is called as uh, like a tree based algorithm which it uh, executes to identify which redundant port should should not uh, like forward the traffic and should be placed into blocking state or so but <clears throat> apart from the basics of how actually stp works there are various types of stp deployments and if you look at them uh, the first type that you have which we will be going through the first type that you have in STP, it's called as 802.1D. Okay, this is kind of the original STP that came up. And then there were then, then types, you can say, then came something like Pervilent. Pervilent STP, which we call it as PVSTP. Right, or it is also called as PVST as well. Then we have uh, per VLAN uh, STP plus, and which is called as PVST plus. And then you have something called, I would say, RST, a rapid spanner protocol. And then you have uh, MST, 
which is multiple rapid or multiple spanning protocol and we identified as 802.1w and you identified with 802.1s these are the standard names that are there so if you talk about that these switches are kind of catalyst switches then catalyst switches uh, kind of operates in uh, previous tp and they also operate in you can say rapid spine tree and they also works on uh, multiple spine tree and all of these uh, like all three of these modes are backward compatible with uh, the standard 802.1 d as well but we will kind of be getting to know about the standard one and then, then we will compare it with various other things so you had certain like like we don't really use as a dot one D there, but the original version of STP came uh, like from the standards of IEEE there, which kind of provides the support for ensuring the loop free topology and all. And uh, it will only be like for one V and there, but yeah. So when you think about variations of what are the spanning tree protocols that you have, then there are various other things that are there. There are support states that goes from disabled to blocking to listening to learning and to forwarding and all. Then you have port types as you have root port, you have designated port, you have blocking port and all, right? And you also have like some key terminologies for STP as well. Be it root bridge, be it BPD, bridge protocol data unit, right? Be it um, like root path cost, be it uh, priority value, be it system ID extension, be it root bridge identifier and so on. So there are so many things and then there are timers as well, right? There are maxes timer, there is like hello timer and then there is forward delay timer. All these kind of uh, features allows you to like be able to understand how STP actually works internally. Yeah. But STP was kind of defined before the modern switches came up, yeah. right? So we kind of were going through a transition where People try to use bridges instead of using switches then. And then the device that kind of originally used STP were known as bridges. And that's why every terminology that, that we know about, like bridge protocol data, like root bridge election, right? And bridge cost and, and all these things. So all these things include the word bridge because bridges were the original devices on which STP was implemented, right? But we have now replaced bridges completely from the scenario. And we have started using uh, switches as well, but the terminology remains same there that we have been uh, using bridge, and uh, sorry, that we have been using bridges to identify the HTTP terminology and all. So yeah, that's that's one of the things that actually exists there. But if you start to understand how actually the STP works here, it's pretty decent, I would say, and pretty you know easy to understand. The by default, you have something called uh, STP cost, or you can call it as STP path cost. And this path cost is kind of uh, like set by default for every type of link that is available there. So you can have different links starting from 10 Mbps link. Which will kind of be identified as Ethernet link. Then you probably move ahead and say 100 Mbps link. And you will have fast Ethernet. Then you have 1 Gbps link, which will kind of be gig Ethernet. And you will have like 10 Gbps link which can be identified as 10 gig Ethernet link. Right, and then you have 20 GB and 40 GB and all in all. You can kind of then include the SFPs and all that you include them. But for 10 Mbps, STP path cost remains same as 100. Then for 100 Mbps, it's 19. Then for uh, 1 Gbps, it's 4. And for everything after 10 GB, it becomes 1 and 1. So for 10 GB, it's going to be one for, uh, you can say, oh no, I think that 
for tan JB, it's two. Yeah, for tan JB, it's two. And then for 20 GBPS. And then going further, it will be kind of one. That's how the scenario is. Okay, so the interface, or you can say the STP cost is kind of an essential component there for root path calculation because whenever you have uh, some like switches, like you have a switch here and you have a switch here and then you have a switch here. And then if you have a switch here. And then you connect it over there. So you kind of have a redundant link considering that this is like one GBPS link and this is one GBPS link. And assuming this is 100 GB link, sorry, not 100 GB, this is 100 MB link. And then you have 100 MB link over here. So how would, uh, this is your switch one, that's your switch four. So how would switch four calculate the best path to the switch one, it will basically consider the uh, link path uh, cost, or so like you can say shortest path cost there, which is going to be in this case. Uh, one GB will be around four plus four, so that's gonna be eight, and then you're gonna have nineteen plus nineteen, that's gonna be thirty-eight. So of course your switch four will choose a route that actually has the lowest path cost there. And then based on that, it's going to call as it's, it's going to calculate the spanning free uh, path cost method. OK, that's that's going to use it uh, for for it. Right. And after you get able now, these values kind of helps you a lot in order to be able to identify how the STP calculation actually needs to be done. 